Well, great. Uh, Mike Sikorsky, supervisor for Zowie Estimation, Home Science Olympiad Elementary. We're going to talk about uh, going into the room, what your children will see, your students, and they're going through uh, station one, station two, and station three, and giving you some hints about how to prepare them for the competition. First of all, they come into the room, and they're going to be looking at uh, 11 or 12 buckets in front of them with a dry substance in it. And they're going to be given a cup, which we'll talk about in a second. They're coming into the room without any pencils or calculators. I provide the TI-108 calculator and pencils for them. There's nothing that they need to bring in with them except their, their brain and their knowledge. Um, they're going to get a cup that has their team number on it and an answer sheet with their team number on it as well. And there's no answer to be written down for station one, but we have to wait until after we weigh their cup later. They're going to be given, uh, it's going to be a bucket like this, right? Normal bucket, going to be filled up by like two pounds of pasta in there of some kind. We don't see thing. anything you're showing. See the bucket? Uh, no, yeah, I'm... we don't have a video from you at the moment. We don't. Um, could we you... All we see is Zowie Estimation Event Coach Workshop. Okay. Is that something we can fix, Stephen, or no? Yeah, I can I can stop sharing that. Uh, I, However, I still don't have a video from you. Can you uh, toggle your video off and on? Okay, that's off. Now it's back on. Try putting it up and down sideways. That helps. Okay, I have you now. It seems like other people okay. could already see you, so that. Yep, I see not... you now. Thank you. Thank you for letting us know. Okay, this is the bucket we're using. Uh, any bucket is possible. But this is the one I'm using, and I've got it from Myers. Twelve of them. And they're going to be lining up two teams behind each bucket, and then they will wait about three or, three or four minutes for the first team in front of them to finish, uh, giving 100 grams of whatever substance is in the bucket to one of the people behind the tables. And we put that to the side, and we weigh it later. And then the other team will move up, and then they go. To, so everybody has to do station one first. After that, they can go to station two or station three, depending on which one is less crowded and they want which one they want to do first. Um, the 100 grams that's inside the cup is uh, what you want to have the students to practice on. The cup is not part of the 100 grams. So you have to work with them on having eight ounce cup, 10 ounce cup, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, whatever, you know, somewhere in that range. That's the smallest cup I would use as an eight ounce cup and the largest would be a 24. Try to use larger than necessary. So it throws off the teams who are just trying to fill it up three quarters away and think, well, it's gotta be good. So you have to have practiced what 100 grams is of various things like uh, peas, lima beans, pennies, nickels, dimes, quarters, uh, paper clips, um, beans of any kind, uh, pastas of all kinds. That's what most likely gets used about 80% uh, of the time is pasta. I did do nuts and bolts a number of years ago, and that was a real game changer for some people because they you know, had a little tiny cup, but you, know, you needed about four and a half nuts and bolts to be able to get 100 grams or close to it. And we had some folks filling it up three quarters way and getting 350 mil. <laughs> 50 grams of um, nuts and bolts. So they, anytime you are double than the actual number, so if you are hitting 200 grams or higher, your score for that part of the competition will be a zero. And same thing with station two. If you, uh, if the number of objects in the container is 1,500, and then you put then your students put down 3,000 or more, that would be more than double, and therefore that portion of the competition would be a zero for that one piece anyway. So you have only one cup to give us in station one. There are three containers at station two and three boxes at station three. We'll talk about those in a second. Um, you could also use, you should practice once in a great while, a hard plastic cup that might weigh 55, 65, 75 grams, because that's much more challenging, of course, to put 100 grams in that cup and have to tear off in your in their hands, say, well, this is, the cup weighs this much, I'm putting in 100 grams of whatever it is, spaghetti or elbow macaroni or whatever, and so it's much more difficult. But like I said, that's only about 20% of the time. I've only done that twice in like 20 years. So basically, if you practice with pastas of different kinds, all different kinds, small, medium, and large, that will be very, very good for station number one. Um, plastic baggies with 100 grams of whatever in them are good to be able to, in between uh, practices, you could have them have a, a, a Ziploc baggie with 100 grams of pennies or 100 grams of lima beans or 100 grams of lentils or whatever. Have them practice holding that in their hand whenever they have a free moment at home or at lunchtime or something and just say, that's 100 grams of whatever. And then the baggie, when we talked about, I can go see, I didn't have a plastic baggie to show you, but just a Ziploc baggie, a sandwich bag with uh, 100 grams of whatever in it is how you have them have that in their pocket 
uh, for practicing at home when you're not with them because uh, you're not going to practice every day. You're going to meet every couple of weeks and then toward the competition probably once a week or something like that, or even twice a week toward the very end in the early May. Um, let's see, what have I got here? Is that already? Okay, so after they've done station one, they've given us their cup. They cannot come back and say, oh, you know what? I thought about something. We didn't think about that. Can we have our cup back? The answer will be no. Once you turn your cup in, you have to go to station two or three. You may go back and forth between station two and three if you, sometimes students uh, make a mistake and they're on station two, which is objects in a container, and they're, they're figuring out length times width times height, which is station three cubic centimeters. And they figure that out when they get to the station three and they realize that that's cubic centimeters. They go, oh no, we made a mistake. And they fear, like, they get real scared. They go, you can go back, do it over again. You have plenty of time. Most students are done in uh, 18, 19, 20, 22 minutes, and you have a half an hour. So making a mistake is usually easy to go back and, and rectify. Station two is number of objects in a container. They have to count the surface of the container. So I have a plastic container from Myers here. It's uh, all solid plastic. Sometimes I have a piece of uh, cellophane over the top, plastic wrap with a rubber band around it. So they sta station two, the uh, obviously a station one, you can handle the materials uh, in the cup or take things out, put things in. Uh, the station two is the only station where you have to leave the containers on the on the table. You can move them around, manipulate them. You just can't turn them upside down because turning upside down, the plastic over the public holding by a rubber band you might not hold and we might have ourselves a big mess. So have your students practice with it being able to move the container around, but not be able to pick it up and turn it upside down. So one of the biggest things about practicing for station number two is to how do you count, you know, up to 20,000 objects? That sounds like a really big task. Well, you don't count 20,000 objects. So let's say I'm using uh, pasta, Alba macaroni, for example. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to count out 100 three different times. And I'm going to weigh those three different amounts of uh, whatever 100 grams was. And it might be, you know, uh, 42 and a half grams one time and 44 and a half grams the second time and 43.8 grams the third time. Take those three numbers, divide by three, you get an average of what 100 pieces of macaroni weigh. Okay, so then you take uh, your box of, of macaroni, you pour it into a container, and you weigh it. Of course, don't forget to weigh the container first and then subtract that from the total. So you get just what the macaroni weighs. Divide by that 42.65, whatever it might be, and you get a number. Maybe it's uh, uh, 42. That would be 42 times 100, because that's what you weighed out. 42 times 100 is 4,200. So you've got, you know, uh, 4,200 in that container. That's how you do that how you practice with station two, how you get things ready for the students to work with without having to count out, you know, 16,000 or 4,200, whatever the case might be. Um, you can, you know, I, obviously I've used rice before, very difficult, or uh, ziti uh, pasta, very tiny. And you have count 100 of those out, it might be 2.95 grams, 2.86 grams, and 2.91 grams. Divide by three again, pour a bunch of ziti into a container, divide by two point, you're gonna get something, you know, might be a, uh, 422 times 100. That's uh, you're going to be you get you're going to get uh, a large number. So you have to take some out because you made too much put too much in there. You only can go 20,000 top. So we're going to have uh, three containers at station two. One is going to be in the 100 to 900 range. Another one's going to be somewhere between 1,000 and maybe 9,000. And the third one is going to be somewhere between 11,000 and 19,000. That's that, that's a not a hard fast rule, but Generally, that's what it's going to be in that range somewhere in there between. So you can have one that's kind of on the lower end, one on the middle, and one on the larger end. So you can practice those three kinds of containers with objects in them. Obviously, they have to be pretty small for the largest one. And you can have use some pretty big pastas if you're in the, in the small and the first container, so to speak. The, uh, 2A would be 2A, 2B, and 2C for the containers. Let's see what else I have here. Station two, three, did that. Okay. Oh, let's talk about how you actually count. There's no formula for station two. You can't do length times width time height or count how many on one side, how many other. You're going to count the first layer, the top layer. So uh, one layer, and then you count this on the side. How many layers do I see? It can be any side. It can be the large side or the side. If it's a rectangle, you don't have to count the. It's just what, how many layers do you see? So you have you have the students. A practice counting one layer. Then you count, then you say, how many layers do you think you see? Multiply by that. So if you get, I get 42 and I got 10 layers, that's 420. That's how that would work. 
And that could be, you know, you could be counting 120 across the layer if it's small pasta. And then it could be 15 layers if it's small. So it'd be 15 times you know, 120. So it could quite, it gets you into the uh, 12, 14, 16,000 range. After you finish station, if the students have finished writing their answers down, and they don't have any, there's no, no units on this, of course, on station two is, it's just a number. Station three is cubic centimeters, but they don't have to put cubic centimeters on. There's no labeling of the number. It just has to be a number. Uh, station three is, uh, I've got over here a box of Kleenex, the regular sized Kleenex box, the larger one. You can also use the box one. That's a little bit smaller. Any box of Kleenex is good. Um, the, large, the, the regular Kleenex box that you that holds like 160 or so would be about the largest box you can use to be able to practice with. Um, uh, toothpaste boxes, boxes of uh, pain, pain relievers, uh, boxes of staples, boxes of tape, all kinds of boxes are, are good. It's 100 uh, cubic centimeters up to 4,000 cubic centimeters. We switched from 2 to 4,000 about three years ago. So we have up to 4,000 cubic centimeters. And uh, any box will do. You have to, they, the students have to figure out, and it has to be natural, natural wrinkles on their hand or the span from their thumb to their finger, something that you can get that's going to be like one centimeter, two centimeters, maybe 10, 11, 12 centimeters. 10 is perfect if you can find something between their thumb and their index finger or their thumb and their third finger, whatever, whatever works so that they can get very accurate at 10, 1, and 2, or even 11 and 12. But 10 is ideal. Because what you're going to do is, we, I see this every year, we see students grabbing this, this Kleenex box, which is quite large, and they're taking their finger and they're going one centimeter, two centimeters, three centimeters, four centimeters. They're counting one centimeter at a time. So they're measuring up to 18 times to go across one length. That causes a little bit of a you know, discrepancy on every one of those measurements. What you want to do is on each side of the box to have no more than three measurements. So 10, and then one or two. It might be 13 centimeters. That would be perfect to be able to use it. Then you have three measurements and only three chances for a little bit of an error. Okay. Uh, also, make sure that they're doing length times width times height, not two lengths or two widths or two heights. That happens also. They see them going across the top, and they're going down and then across. That's what they should do. Sometimes they go across the top, across again, and across. So they're using the same, doing two of the two lengths the same. And that's not good, of course, because they're not all going to be the same like that. Um, let's think. That's pretty much there on the on station three. Uh, of course, you have to multiply using your calculator. Um, maybe it's uh, 13 times six times seven centimeters, and you get a number. You write that down. And that's their answer for that one. Natural wrinkles in the hand and a, a span between their thumb and their index, uh, little finger, or thumb and index finger. Something that work that, that's easy for them. That's natural. No marking. You can't mark on the hands with magic marker or pencil to be able to demark or make a ruler out of their fingers and hands. It has to be natural. Okay, uh, let's see. Back of the answer sheet is available for calculations. It's also good to teach your students to fold their answer sheet in half so that their the answers can't be seen by people sitting next, standing next to them. Because that's obviously if someone uh, feels that they have studied enough, they might just want to grab someone else's answers because they don't think they <laughs> have the right answer. Okay. Back of the sheet is good for calculations. Let's see what else. I think that's about covers it. I'm open for some questions. And of course, practice. If you practice twice between now and May, you're guaranteed not to do that well. But if you practice 12 times between now and May, you'll, you'll, you'll do pretty well. It's a matter of uh, getting used to holding 100 grams and measuring things in a container and measuring length and sometimes height on a box and learning how to use the calculator. A TI-108 is, if you were to practice with the same one I've got, that's great, but any calculator will work. But of course, you're not bringing that into the competition. I provide calculators and pencils when they arrive. You said the TI-108 is the one that they're going to use in the competition? That's correct. That okay, in, thank you. Chip Schwann and bought 50 of them. <laughs> thank you.
Now's the time to ask questions, folks. Of course, if you do think of something later, you can go on the website, wacomso.org, and uh, FAQs, frequently asked questions. You can pose a question there, which will come to me eventually, and I will answer back if you think of something later that uh, poses a problem for you. Uh, Autumn asked in the chat, the calculator is provided? Yes. And the students come into the competition with just their brains and their practice, what they've done. So they don't, no pencils or calculators are brought into the competition. I provide everything. And the answer sheet as well. So they don't, they don't. But that is, but that is true. Make sure they, make, pack, sure they make, sure they, make sure they put, turn their answer sheet in. We've had a couple of students, a couple, a couple of teams walk out with their answer sheet, which of course disqualifies them. So make sure they turn their answer sheet in before they walk out the door. Another question. Uh, how many calculators per team? There's a calculator at uh, for each team, one calculator. Be able to share between the two students if there are two students. Can only be one student pass up sometimes in Zowie, and they can still compete. But yes, there's uh, one calculator at both locations. You don't need a calculator at station one, but at station two, the containers, there's a calculator for each team there. They don't have to carry it with them. There's also a calculator for each grouping of three boxes at station three. There'll be a calculator there as well, also a TI-108. And pencils there as well. They don't have to carry pencils either. There are two pencils, one for each person on each team at uh, station two, and then two pencils again at station three, along with the TI-108 calculator. And things uh, are labeled, another... things are labeled as uh, station two, A, B, and C, and station three, A, B, and C. And that's how it is on the answer sheet as well. Question, go ahead. Uh, another question from the chat. Uh, can you please talk about how the event is scored? Okay, uh, sure I can. Uh, so the obviously when you I suppose the students put in 92 grams inside their, their cup, we don't weigh the, we weigh the cup, tear, tear that off. So that's already taken care of. So they don't, if they put in 92 grams, their score on station one is 92. And on the other ones, let's suppose it's, uh, I'm going to make it easy, 1,000 is the correct answer for uh, station 2A. And they put in, uh, they, they say it's 920. They would also get a score of 92 on that out of the possible 9, 920 out of 1,000 is 92%. So as you divide is what you do. And so if you, in the station 3, the same thing. Let's suppose the cubic centimeters are uh, 329. And they thought it was 300. You take 300 divided by 329, you get a, a number times 100. That gives you a percentage. That percentage might be, in that case, probably like 88.6. That would be their score, or 88.65, or whatever it might be. That would be their score on one of the one of the state one of the one of the three boxes on station three. So you take all six of all seven numbers, station one's number, and the three scores from station two, and the three scores from station three. So there are seven possible scores of anywhere from 100, perfect to zero if you have more than double the actual number. Those seven scores together added up, give you your total score for the event, and that's that we, we uh, obviously put them in order from first through whatever at that point. Never had a tie yet. It's just too it's complex. Just too complex. I lost you for a second. So for station two, they um, they cannot lift the containers off the table. How can they handle the containers? What can they do with what's at table two or station two? You can spin it around, um, just to be able to see the different sides, go on, look on top of it. You just can't pick it up and turn it upside down. It's, uh, it's seeable on all, all, I guess, all six sides, if you want to call it that. Yeah. But they can't pick it up the bottom. So I guess they can only see five sides. But they can't see the bottom because they can't pick it up. But everything else is, else visible. is visible. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Are the containers going to be open? Like, will they be able to put their finger in there and move it or move the stuff around or no? Uh, can uh, the buckets, the station one? Yes. Uh, no, on station two and three. The boxes are sealed. And uh, so there might be stuff inside of them, like, if I'm using a toothpaste, uh, a cheap toothpaste box, uh, there might be toothpaste inside the box. If we didn't open them up and take it out, but it so it has a little, little, a little heft to it, but not much. It's a little small box of uh, toothpaste. 
But station two will not, it'll either have a plastic cap or it'll be a uh, piece of plastic wrap held on by rubber band. And that's why we can't pick them up and turn them upside down because that will not hold and we'll have a big mess. So we try not to let that happen. But you can see, you can count the surface and you can count the layers. And that's what you have to do on station two. Get good. Get, and of course, it, a, a, a little bit of a help here. Sometimes you have two students and one is really good at station one and the other one is really good at station two and they're both good at station three. Well, then you let the person who's really good at station one do station one. And the person who's really good at station two, do station two. You don't, you don't have to share every aspect of this because maybe someone's really good at counting layers and counting uh, the surface. The other person, not so much. So you just tell them, okay, on this portion of the competition, you can, you know, you, you can still provide information and help your partner. But if the partner thinks that you're wrong and you, and you, you've, over the, the course of the practices, we've noticed that he or she is much better at this portion of it, then you let that person take the lead. And vice versa, if, uh, station three, you find one one person in your your two person team is much better at the calculations of the using their fingers and, and spans on the boxes. Then you let that person take the lead, and let the other person maybe work on the on the calculation portion on the calculator or whatever. So just know that you don't have to say that. It, you know, sometimes we have people tell me, "Well, I have that one person gives me an answer, the other person gives an answer. They put their answer together and divide by two. That may or may not work. That could work, but doesn't have to. If someone's really off on a certain part of this competition, you don't want them to uh, skew it. So you know, you, that, it was something you have to find out when you're practicing. If you find someone is really, really having a hard time with any portion of this, let the other person take the lead. So that's a helpful hint. Thank you. Yep. Another question from the chat. Um, could you clarify which stations they're able to pick up the containers at? Okay, station one has a bucket and it has dry substance in it, mostly often, most often pasta of some kind. They have a cup in their hands. They get to pick up. They can take the cup and dump it into the, the bucket and pull a whole bunch out, hold that in their hands, and they can dump it out again and start over again. Or they can pick a few out, put a few more in. So they're obviously they're touching the materials at station one. Station two, they may move the containers that have objects in them around, but they may not pick them up off the table. Station three, three boxes. Obviously, they can pick those up as much as they want, turn them upside down, anything they want there on station three. Another question from the chat. Uh, is, is it scored out of 100 points total? No, uh, a perfect score would be 700 out of 700 because each of the pieces is a, has a possible 100 score. If you were to get 100 grams in the cup exactly, then you get a score of 100 on station one. If you uh, guessed estimated correctly on the station two, all three of the containers, how many objects were in them, you'd have a score of 100 on each of those. And the same thing with you were able to estimate number of cubic centimeters on all three of the boxes, you'd have a score of 100 on each one of those. That would be highly unlikely. Uh, but if you did, that would be a 700 score. So the best you can do is 700. I find so that you, as a parameter for you to think about that uh, with normal, like I'm not using nuts and bolts or something like that, or not, not using rice, uh, then the average first place team is probably in the 90 to 92 percent across the board. They're getting a, they're getting a score of 92 on all seven portions of this competition. And then as you get down to the 80s, 88, 86, 85, 84, that's a team that's going to be coming in second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth place. And then somewhere down to the low 80s, upper, sometimes high 70s, would be the team that comes in the seventh and eighth place, which is I think. We're going to have this year down to eighth place, so that would be about, about it. You get if your students are consistently uh, scoring in the 60s only, then you need to practice a little bit more. You got to get it up in the 80s at least to be able to to medal most of the time. Again, if I'm using nuts and bolts on station one, that would be a that would bring the the average down quite a bit, which I don't plan on doing because that was that devastating <laughs> for some of the students. They felt so bad about that. I want had I want them to feel good about coming out to this competition not feeling like, I don't know what happened here. So we use, don't use, haven't used nuts and bolts in a long time, but practice with the quarters or something like that, something heavy, because that obviously doesn't, doesn't take a whole lot of quarters to fill up to get 100 grams in a cup, or nickels or dimes either for that matter, or pennies. Anybody else?
Okay, once again, if you have a question that you think of later on, go to the website, uh, mcomasso.org slash FAQ or elementary slash FAQ, and you can ask a question there as well if you think about something later. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Have fun with this. The kids actually like like doing this a lot. They start practicing how many steps it takes to go from their front door to the car, stuff like that. A lot of estimation <laughs> takes place. Good thing. <laughs>